Hey guys, it's Maxi here and welcome to something I've wanted to bring to the channel for quite a number of weeks now and it's something I'm going to call Football Manager Memories. This is going to be a case of looking through every football manager that I've had and looking at previous saves and just really looking to see how successful or how poor they were. Now this is FM 13 we're starting with. I just want to say certainly by no means my first FM. I've actually had every single one of them. The first couple on Steam which I've got, which are FM 10, 11 and 12, don't seem to have any save files because obviously I've changed computers since then and never really carried over the files. But uh, in comparison to this particular save, this was such a good save that I just always kept this save file. So that's how we explore that today. Unfortunately, the rest of the FM 13 save files that I've kept have been basically corrupt. So that's a bit of a pain in the ass, but it's good to know that I've still got this. And we can certainly look through it. So we'll go through 13 today. There'll probably be a couple of episodes on 14, 15, 16. Not a lot on 17 because I didn't particularly enjoy that. So I didn't have a lot of saves. Uh, and then maybe at the end of it we might start an FM 18 save as we look in to FM 19. Small bit of history. Uh, as I said, I played every FM. As I say, the saves are probably lost to time. Would have been a really good Huddersfield save years and years ago. Uh, this FM13 had a very good Dortmund save as well. I think a really good Notts County save one year. Uh, obviously, being for Scotland, there were a few good saves. Mullerow, Scotland, uh, unfortunately, both sides of the old firm as well. But today's video, the first edition, is FM13. Um, I was actually on FM, I really struggled for a save before deciding, you know, Man U's always been an English team. Let's, let's go Man United, just see what we can do. Uh, it turned out to be one of the Longest saves I've ever done, getting to 2046, of course, in the upcoming episodes that gets surpassed. But just the most successful team I'd ever made, uh, because obviously straight away you're competing for honours. And long story short, we ended up being the most successful side in Britain. I ended up, me personally, winning more league championships than Liverpool had in its history, and a lot of Champions Leagues. As well, so I just want to quickly go um, and try and find the history tab. As I say, it's still getting used to it. So you see, there I was in charge for 12,412 days. I won 133 awards. Did go on holiday for a bit, but because um, basically how slow it was getting at times, I had to remove every league and I was just holidaying between games and getting rid of the internationals as well because it was just horrible. But you can see second in every ranking, nationality, continental, nation and world. So I'll need to check who's actually number one. I don't actually know. So I'll look to check that. But over 2,000 games played, 1,483 won, 242 draws with 301 losses. That's just at Man U. There was 14 games internationally. I'll actually need to check who that was because I can't remember. But you can see there, good percentage of wins, 23% win ratio, 59 cups and 24 league championships. Did sign 275 players. Um, for some reason it's not, I think it must have been because the value of the players bought and sold is probably maxed to what it's expecting. That's why it's not shown, but we'll look through that. Uh, you might think 129 million back in FM13. Uh, this guy was seriously insane. Brett Hoban's probably the best new gen I've ever had. Uh, you know, my mates all know about him, I know about him, you know what I mean, he's just such a good player for us. And it's a great story behind that. And I see 43 million is our biggest sale. So obviously nothing compared to obviously the markets we've got. And of course, I've got to add, just the 24 league championships. So Brett Hoban, you can see here, is my assistant manager. That's how, you know, the connection was, was just the man. You can see there, 47 years of age now, he'd 100... 82 caps for his country, England, and 174 goals. So that gives you an idea just how good this guy was. Now, the history behind him, as you can see here, came through in the first couple of seasons as a new gen at Liverpool. That's where I'd identified him. I tried my hardest to make the deal happen, but of course, Liverpool at my United doesn't ever really happen directly. He went to Arsenal, a couple of great seasons there, and then I thought, you know what, let's just throw the you know the book at Arsenal uh, for as much money as we can, we agreed 129 million, and you can see there, goals to game, games ratio, absolutely spectacular. Just honestly, one of the best new gens I've ever had. He was absolutely brilliant. Uh, if you do follow us on Twitter, hit us up, and I can try and find the 
Guy Azzo that I have of his stats when he was in his prime, but he was simply outstanding. So let's have a look here. Um, so I had Kurt Zuma at one point. So it was Brazil I managed between 2018 and 2019. So I got to the quarterfinals of the Copa America, lost, and then just went, nah, I'm done. So that's fair enough. That's cool. You can see there lots of first places. Didn't win the league every year. A lot of second places in there. We'll need to check and see who won the league in those years. A third place one year in 23, uh, 33, 34. But pretty, pretty dominant that side. Never out of the Champions League. So here we go. So we lifted the Premier League 13, 14, 16, 18. That's fine, that's fine. Seven Capital Cup, Capital One Cups, as it was at the time. So I didn't really take that serious, admittedly. That was always a case of playing youth players. We won 12 FA Cups in that time, 15 Community Shields, nine Champions Leagues, and eight Super Cups, and the Club World Championship eight times as well. So that's, that's quite interesting. So I'll just quickly have a look then. So who stopped us winning titles? Man City a couple of times, Arsenal. Tottenham in 2024 and Man City a few times at the start as well. So that's interesting. That's interesting. Premier League, how's that actually shaped up? So I'd imagine Blackburn were probably still roughly near the Premier League in 2013, so or 2013 14 season. That'd be right, or about 20, no, 2012 2013, so that sounds about right. Bristol Rovers up there is a bit of a shock. Um, Huddersfield obviously cementing themselves. Every club with a logo obviously is championship or below. So maybe yeah, Blackburn was maybe a bit of a shock there. Plymouth up as well. Everyone else was kind of, you know, you'd expect they'd be thereabouts, championship or in the Premier League already. So yeah, it's quite cool. So what I'm intrigued, obviously you're not going to know any kind of player. This is obviously the pattern team I had. This guy Polino was effectively going to be the next Brett Hoban. His stats certainly match that. I mean, fantastic finishing, first touch, dribbling, heading, off the ball 20, physically imposing. He was brought in 61 million from Santos, and you can see there, after the first, you know, six months of getting used to the team, he certainly cemented his place as, as going that way. I'm trying to think who I remember. John Hennessy was always tipped to be my next Wayne Rooney, and it never quite materialised. And what I liked is I was able to have an affiliate with Motherwell. So a lot of the time it was sending folk to Motherwell to help them win a few league titles, which I think they did uh, because they had so many players from us. Let's see if I can check Motherwell's history. Let's get used to all these tabs again. Yes, yeah, so there you go. 18, 20, 31, 34, 36, 42 and 44. Certainly helped my, my wee team out there with a few league championships. So that's always quite cool to see. Uh, he was always one that was touted to be good, but it never really happened. Uh, but you can see me. Is any FM save? It's always going for that kind of 23, 25s when we start playing. You know, they properly play week in, week out. And they all come through, you know, they get signed young, they get development, and then they get brought into the first team as, as quickly as we can. Give them some first team football. I remember Marco Pierre, I remember him. I'm trying to think in who else we might show. Yusuf Ben Belichem. I think we played him quite a bit, didn't we? Rings a bell. Yeah, it was an okay player. We brought him in from Ares Avignon, but it's always a case of just looking about, scouting in the right places. But the scary thing is, is you look at these guys, you know, 2019, they were all great for the f potential for the future. You get a 17 year old Leandro Marco, big potential there. Where did we nab him from? Barcelona, £10 million. Pounds. The money was there, so you could always bring in these youngsters. Let's just sort by value. It's always giving a good indication. I and mean, you can see that in England, obviously, it would bring a good few youngsters through, so we're always going to get people. Arvid Tights, fuck, I remember him. Out of contract, we brought him in big money, I'm sure, from Bayern. £8 million pounds when he was a youngster, and yeah, we pretty much gave him a full career. Maybe he didn't play as much as he would have liked, but that's... It's a wee memory, because this is the first time I've had a proper chance to look back at it, uh, and then get a few in there as well. But what I want to look at as well... As I say, the team is good. It's a great successful story. It's the transfers. I want to see, you know, who we brought in at the start uh, in comparison to, you know, who turned out good and who turned out well. I won't be able to see their stats because obviously a long, long time ago. But it was quite cool. And straight away, 3.5 million Wellington Nem. I think we all remember Wellington Nem from back in the day. What a player 
he was. Shame it never really kicked on. So let's see, we gave him a couple of loan spells. Mulder, Corinthians, Dortmund. He got a spell. You're wondering, how the hell did he go to Scully? I now remember this. A Scully got a tycoon, and a Scully were one of the big clubs in European football. If I go to their history, they have four Champions Leagues. They were absolutely 21 Serie A's. They were fucking phenomenal. Really, really good team. And they stayed there. I did have the Italian leagues loaded, but of course I had to leagues away to make the game go faster. But they were they were really, really good. And a, a proper form in my side. But you can see there, a lot of players valued very highly. So, well within them. Victor Wanyama was a pickup from Celtic back then. Cavani, when he was back at Napoli. How did Cavani do for us? I'd be interested to know that. 47 goals in 85 before we sold him at Juve. Fair enough. And Mats Hummels as well. So that's quite cool. Right at the start. Sales. We pretty much get rid of Nani straight away to Tottenham. Anderson to Swansea. And then you look at that and it's just a who's who of really, you know, players that have known to have a good career down the, the football league. You know, the likes of uh, Tunnicliffe, Wooten, Tyler Blackett, Robbie Brady obviously in the Premier League now. Tom Lawrence, Will Keane, Nick Powell. Angelo Henriquez, I think we gave him a chance at one point, but he certainly had a good, uh, you know, he certainly relaunched his career, he was very good in FM, you can see there, Jesse Lingard and Makeda as well, and Bebe, let's not remember Bebe. So in the next season, David Alaba came in for £20 million, a free transfer of Fernando Loriente, Alessandro Florenzi, Mattia Destro, I think that was about the time when he was absolutely phenomenal, and everyone bought Mattia Destro. Didn't he really play much for us, admittedly? Be the stellar career at Southampton. Abraham, I'm going to assume, was a youngster. Not really played for us, but got, you know, good matches at Dortmund. A hell of a career, actually. And then some FM Wonder Kid legends. Simi Varashko, obviously, now of Atletico Madrid. And Adam Mielsen. Everyone bought Adam Mielsen back in the day. Adam Mielsen was absolutely quality. Another player who never really got a sniff with us at all. A couple of loan spells, as we always do. If a player doesn't play for us, we try and loan him out. You'll probably notice that with many C save. If you follow that, we had a stellar career at Roma. In Fabregas, we brought Cesc Fabregas in. He was at Barcelona. Again, a lot of loans out. And that was a proper change in the guard there as well, with Rio, Scolzi, and Ryan Giggs all being released. And let's see who we made big, or at least money off of. Oh, you can't sort by value at this particular FM, so you know the Fabio, Michael Carrick went to Arsenal, Johnny Evans went to where did he go? Sorry, I saw Johnny Evans second got Reading for ten million. And they folk like Adnan Yanazai going out and loan to Ipswich. So I'm not going through every season, just the seasons well, it's still real players. Uh, you can see here nearly fifty million in Mario Gotza, Michael Bradley came in, Nathan Redman, James Lord Price, unfortunately Vladimir Weiss. And yeah, controversial move, bringing in Samir Nasri. Uh, in terms of outs, Alexander Butner, Dan Fletcher for £10 million. Uh, sold Laurenti to Southampton then. And that's pretty much it. So into 15 16, uh, and this is where you know some of the big, big signings started to come in. So I always make a few strange ones as well. Uh, looking back, I've always tended to just go, I bought him in. Why? So quite cool to see, you know, 17 million Mark Andre Terstergen. I don't know why. I think I was confident that he was going to be my first choice, but I think I just wanted to try a different goalkeeper. I never really used Terstergen, and everyone was buying him. So I think I actually got rid of the hair very quickly uh, just to go with Terstergen. Looking back, I don't know why, but uh, it's one of those things. Kiriakos Papadopoulos came in. Uh, what of Valdo? Are you a new gen? He was in new gen, that's cool, I don't think he really played much. Nope, got a couple of loan spells. That's cool. Uh, Seda Dumbia from Siska on a freebie Zlatan, so I predicted that one. Uh, looking through who's a real player, I don't know why I brought in Aiden McGeady, but you can see the big one there, £71 million pounds for Neymar, who had a good career with us, 220 goals and 212 matches before he went to Man City. Finish his career in terms of outs, Ashley Young, Javi Hernandez, Samuel Nagy, so we had a bit of profit on there. We sold Vidic because he was winding down. Danny Wilbeck for twenty million. Dumbia we made ten million out of and overall ninety two million was brought in. Sixteen seventeen 
Uh, Vilter Arts was actually a new gen that played for us a long, long time. But we brought in like so Will Hughes for ten million pounds. Alex Smithies, I think, was just to be a backup goalkeeper at three point one. Sean Murray, I think he was like, he was not highly rated back then, but we paid ten million for him. And the other one that's a real player, I think you can see, was Kurt Zuma, again someone who was absolutely phenomenal then. And he was pretty much an ever present well not an ever present, but getting twenty to thirty games every season before moving on. To Blackburn. In terms of outs, let's look at the big ones. Wayne went out to Chelsea, Vice, Cavani went, Kagawa went as well, and David De Gea went to Juventus. So yeah, punted out De Gea just so I could use Terstergen. And look at that. Matt Staley, Adnan Yanazai, all released in free transfers. Weird new look back. So 17-18, if we look at that one, Kevin Strutman in, that's quite a good signing. Ron Robert Zilas, so I think we brought him back for homegrown purposes as well. Coca Planka came in, remember the hype around him years and years ago. Uh, Fabio Cohen Trout, who was linked with my United nearly every summer, came in as well. And Iker Munayin, the wonder kid, of course, previously was brought in. Gave Motherwell 10 million by sending uh, Gerald Sloan from them, but one, ones I want to look at here in particular was one Mata for 15.75 million and Hazard for 70. This is the year Chelsea didn't make the Champions League, so I tried to cash in, and Eden Hazard was just a great capture. And one player I've said a lot of times, I'm so gutted that uh, Man United were unable to get, but class to see them, and then you add in the fact that, you know, you're losing the likes of Van Persie. They're losing Fabregas, both of them released, Adam Nielsen sold, Valencia, Redmond, Munayin didn't really settle and was sold six months later, same with Coca Planka, so a lot of these ones you think will work, don't seem to work. And then we bring back Cristiano, he's only out on loan apparently, but Cristiano came back, ironically the same summer he moved, um, as I say, in real life to Juve, £8 million we paid for him, so he was cool to, to bring back. Bringing in Shikiri from Bayern at this point, and a Dortmund loan signing of Lukas Piszczek and Ribe for Yokai Gundigan. So that's good signs to see there. In terms of outs, Angelo Henriquez going out for 18 million was the big one alongside Florenzi to PSG. See any real players there? We loan back Danny Welbeck. Kasper Schmeichel in for another goalkeeping option. Some of my early signings are very questionable, I will say that. But again, made a lot of money in terms of outs. And I'm looking here. Again, not a lot of real players. Or people just that ring a bell. Eric Lamel is one on a freebie from Bayern. I think this is when you start hitting new gen territory. Because uh, you see you can really recognise a name. Darren Randall for some reason. Again, God knows why. But yeah, properly hitting the new gen stage by now. But yeah, it's quite cool just looking back and seeing some of those potential signings. I'm not going through every year of the Premier League, maybe just the first couple. Um, if we just quickly go way down, you see first season there. Won the league with 12 points, a great start to the save. With Norwich, Sunderland and West Ham that went down. Kick on to the next season. Man United, Man City, Tottenham and Stokes are Stoke in the top four. Something that seems to always happen in FM, even back then. But this field, Blackburn and Fulham down. And a quick look at season three. So the first year we didn't win the league, three points cost us. And yeah, Aston Villa finishing fourth. And Arsenal way down in ninth. So the last thing I want to check, I just got a look at your club, is just a few things about the club as well. So... Got my own stadium as well, that was cool, the Maxwell Arena, nearly 130,000 capacity. I hadn't went in to look for a, an FM Sun at this particular point, that will happen in future episodes, and of course we'll try to make that happen in FM 18. That was quite cool to see. Uh, let's see what else can we really look at here? Um, information. So you can see there so many icons and legends, so many new gens as well. Just try to see if there's any that particularly stand out. So you, all your, you know, particular ones are usually there. I think the biggest shock straight away is Tom Cleverley as a legend. So apparently Tom Cleverley was outstanding for me. Uh, I'm in there and Sir Matt Busby and Sir Alex Ferguson, of course, as managers. I remember Assis, he was really, really good. And then your icons, you know, you had the likes of Eden Hazard, 
Mourinho have just obviously got just now Neymar and the obviously the, the legends of previous years gone by, of course, mostly class of 92. And then, yeah, then, of course, the likes of Steve Bruce as well, Holy Gunnar Solskjaer, the great Dan Peter Schmeichel, Rudd, the list goes on and on and on. So I say, stadium was built in 2028, so realistically, in another two years, we could actually get a bigger stadium again. But, of course, that didn't materialise. And what I wanted to check was, of course, our Champions League wins. That's the last thing I want to check. Tell a lie, I want to check a few things in the club history in terms of appearances and the like. So, if I just go to past winners, I just want to know who will be beating finals. So, if we go way, 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 way back. So, my first Champions League wasn't until 2017. The Atletico took to 2023 before we get a double over Real Madrid. And then Porto won it the next year. Before them went on to beat Bayern and Porto for another two. You can see they're losing to Atletico. Ascoli and Torino were the two teams that came out of Italy and just caused so many problems. They're not two for Ascoli there. So the Champions League was horrible to get a hold of before we get another two in 39 and 40. Bayern got a good run. Then PSG lost another final in 2044. And then the last two have been won by us. So that's quite impressive to know that, you know, of the last. Eight Champions League finals we've competed in five of them. So that's quite cool to see. And yeah, you'll see there. Best player, quite a few of them. A scholar. Come on, there should be a Brett Hoban in there. There we go. Two in there. Eric Lamella. And Eden Hazard in there as well. Apparently Shakiri was the best player in the Champions League one year. Ball's weird. Right, so what I wanted to check then to finish off was just records, effectively. Uh, just to see what had been done. So top goal scorer is this modern day top goal scorer oh so I need to all oh, time that's what I wanted I wrong button. So modern day there we go. So top goal scorer in one season was Paulinho who scored seventy in all competitions. So I'm assuming then yep forty one in the league, eleven in the cup, eighteen for you know, as in Europe, and then 15 again for his club, uh, for his country. So that's 85 goals in total. Pretty damn awesome. Uh, so look there, De Jong got 41 in one league season. That's 1911. So that's well by our date. Robert Molyneux, I think he was a central midfielder. I want to say, but he, as I say, 32 assists, 35 assists in one season. Highest average rating, Brett Holman in that 25-26 season, won 8.19. Most man matches went to Hoban again with 18 in the 33 34 season, so that gives you an idea how long we had him. Ernesto, four red cards, so he was just ridiculous. Giggsy, still record appearance holder. And yeah, top league goal scorer of all time, Brett Hoban. One thing I always like to try and break is the young player record, and I always try and do it in the Cups. 15 years and 78 days for Franny Rosic versus Barrow. He's still actually with the club, he is only 19 now, but you can see there. When you get a player of that ability, you try and bring them in as quickly as possible. And yeah, we played 10 teams for the first team last year, but never really broken through. Apart from that, biggest signing, of course, was Hoban. Ronaldo was still the biggest out. Rohic actually scored in that game, which is quite remarkable. Hazard did my quickest goal at 12 seconds. And let's end it, Ronaldo has only played 33 times and 10 goals on his return. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys. This was, of course, the FM Memories. Uh, if you did play FM 13 yourself, let us know how you got on, what your memories of your save was, and what kind of players you assigned, and how you, you know, what you remember from it, and, of course, the games before that. I say, unfortunately, mm -hmm. don't have any same game, save games to go over, but we do have the likes of, they're all on Steam, but, you know, 10, 11, and 12, but it's, it's a bit frustrating as well. I've got, uh, as I say, a copy of Champ Mario 304, but I uh, just can't get it working and really kind of get through, kind of been working through the channels to get it to work because I say it is quite a complex thing. And CMO 1 or 2, I think, it's just lost its, its hype, I think, because of uh, really, because of the way Windows 10s are, computers are, it's just too fast. You try to put a bid in and you end up bidding a million or two million more than you wanted to put in. But still, plenty of episodes to come up. Not all saves will be great, you know, but there'll be a few saves where, like, uh, all right, this was just horrible. But yeah, let's say the only save in FM13 I still got was this fantastic save at Man United. I think this was the, the third long-term one, but the first one where I was like properly 
the team. So cheers for watching. Any likes, comments, subscriptions, always deeply appreciated. And I hope we'll catch you for the next episode of Football Manager Memories. Cheers and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.